What's up Cloud Gamers, welcome to the Cloud Gaming Extreme channel, your destination for all things Cloud Gaming. Death's Door hit GeForce now last week and I finally found some time to jump in and check it out. Loading into the game is very quick as you see, no problems in that department and I am running the PC client. I'm on a 2060 C rig with a 1920 by 1080 resolution. Ignore my ugly mush that popped up on the bottom right hand corner for some strange reason. Looks like I need to swap around some shortcuts. Looking quickly into these settings and we don't have much but Depth of field, ambient occlusion and reflections that really give a different dimension to the graphics on this one. Controller is fully supported and you can rebind all actions for keyboard and mouse as well as the controller for those who like to do so. Heading over to the start of the game and I've pulled up the stats. Don't laugh at my 30 plus ping, this is normal and playable for me. Roaming around finding my way into the controls and you see I have zero frames or packet loss throughout, the game is feeling very responsive so far. Now we have the technical aspects covered, let's talk about the game. First of all, I am really liking the bleak design, the neon coloured weapons and signage around the world fits in very well. The isometric viewpoint is one that has allowed the developers to stickily hide some items and secrets around the world so make sure to explore every nook and cranny. The game's dialogue is on point as you would expect from a game published by Devolver Digital, sometimes very cheesy, sometimes edgy and everything in between. Chandler the Handler is the crow we first visit to get the story underway and I'll do my best not to spoil any of it for you. So we make our way through our first door and we have a little more colour in here. We now learn the basics of how to navigate the world using melee and ranged attacks across the levels to open up gates that allow us to advance our journey. With that easily done, we now encounter our first boss. The demonic forest spirit stands in our way. Time to reap its soul. At this point, the combat is okay. We can quick attack, power up an attack and use our bow and arrow. Later on I'll show you where we can level up and how to. Notice that we have to carry out successful attacks to regenerate our minimal 4 arrow shots. This is good in a way that you have to be careful and selective with attacks going forward. You see top left we have space for another 3 weapons and these come later in the game but you have to find them for yourself otherwise I'll spoil the story. Overall the combat is very responsive so I'm more than happy with this so far. As with all boss battles, there is always a sequence to be followed in some manner and this one is no different. We don't have a health bar for the boss, but you will notice with each hit more cracks appear and the colour becomes more vibrant on enemies the more damage they take. This however took me way longer than it should have to surpass. 4 hits and you're dead, so be careful in that respect as one silly move or one lapse in concentration can be deadly and you'll be thrown back to the beginning to start over again. And this is basically what happened to me in the beginning, I took it for granted and I did die a few times. With the soul finally reaped, or so I thought, until some big giant bird cocked me from behind and stole my payday, the story now kicks in for real. Don't even ask me about these little cauliflower looking things with legs that are following me around, I have no idea what significance they play just yet. So we head through the mysterious door in search of our lost soul and we come into the lost cemetery. We must navigate our way through here, fighting off enemies, collecting life seeds and soul energy while trying to find keys and advance our way through the game. The life seed we have picked up can regenerate our health as you see now. We plant the seed, consume, voila, full health. These are pretty sparse throughout the game so you need to use them wisely. Defeating enemies and collecting mass soul energy orbs will accumulate energy points you can use to level up your abilities. We must however travel back to the Hall of Doors to do this though. Visiting the Vault Keeper and spending those points give you the ability to upgrade various aspects of our little soul seeking crow. With the upgrades done, it's back to soul searching. Various enemies come in all shapes and sizes, some are one hit kills, some are two, three and so on, you catch the drift. You have to be very tactile in your approach, you can't just go gun ho or you will be punished. Secrets and hidden areas are there to be found that reap crystal rewards like you see here. 
so make sure and be thorough in your exploration. Overall, great game and is very reasonably priced at around £16 for the base edition or you can pick up the deluxe edition for around £25 on Steam which gets you the soundtrack and an art book along with the game. I have been very impressed with the performance of the game in GeForce Now, very impressed with the game as a whole. You see throughout the footage captured that it was all very smooth and for me personally, GeForce Now has been a solid gaming experience. The stream consistency has been tremendous and has been as close to local as I have experienced in the cloud. Well folks, that's enough from me, it's now time to hear what you all think. Drop your thoughts in the comments below, we'll love to read them. Have you played this one yet or are you on the fence? Remember and check out all of our social channels for the latest cloud gaming news, tech reviews, comparisons and gameplay. Until next time then, stay safe and keep on gaming.